RTB 101, where we discuss practical questions to equip you to share your faith more effectively. And here to help me talk about a very common question among my friends who believe in the young earth is my colleague, Dr. Fuzz Rana. Welcome back, Fuzz. Krista, thanks for having me. Now, from what I understand, um, common wisdom says that DNA should not survive for millions of years. It should decay away a long time ago, except when it doesn't. (laughs) And we're talking about some of those times when it doesn't seem to decay away. So I'm going to have you help walk us through a recent discovery that prompted this discussion? Yeah, well, recently, uh, a team of researchers from North Carolina State University uh, discovered evidence for DNA associated with a juvenile duckbill uh, dinosaur that dates at about uh, 75 million years in age. And this is the first time anybody has discovered Uh, any kind of evidence for DNA in a fossil specimen of that age. And so this is a landmark discovery to be certain. And it raises all kinds of very interesting questions, including the the questions that our friends who are young earth creationists would ask, which is basically, how is it possible for DNA to survive 75 million years in age? Clearly, these fossils must be only thousands of years old, not 75 million years old. And therefore, the dating techniques used to determine the age of these fossils, and hence the age of the Earth, must be flawed. And so they see this as being prima facie evidence that the Earth must be only uh, three to six thousand years, or uh, sorry, must be only six thousand years old. Yeah, and that that last point is very important because they see this evidence as being part of their positive scientific case for the earth only being thousands, not millions of years old. So um, when we think about these DNA, ancient DNA tissue discoveries, help us think about that from an old earth creation perspective. What do you think could account for this anomalous data? Yeah, well, and the first point I would make is that there's absolutely no reason whatsoever to think that the radiometric dating techniques used to, to age date fossils is a flawed technique. There's plenty of evidence that indicates this is a reliable dating method. And so therefore, there's got to be some explanation for how DNA could survive that long. And in fact, uh, researchers have been working on these kind of questions for quite some time now. How is it possible for soft tissue materials to survive in fossils? And have recognized that there's two competing mechanisms. One is decomposition, And the other are mechanisms that would essentially delay that decomposition process. And you just simply have to delay the decomposition process long enough for the soft tissue materials to become encased in a a mineral entombment. And once they become kind of encased in minerals, these soft tissue materials essentially will no longer decay. And and so we understand in principle how this preservation could take place. And uh, it turns out that it, under usual, under highly unusual circumstances, soft tissue materials can survive in, in, in fossil remains uh, for a variety of different types of, of mechanisms that, again, delay the decomposition process just long enough for mineral entombment to take place. So just to highlight a couple of points that you said there, Fuzz, uh, if I understand what you're saying, that... In general, the, we know that these these dating techniques are reliable because we see all this evidence for the reliability. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, we can acknowledge that there are these anomalous data points, data that doesn't quite fit the model. And so we're trying to figure out how do we make sense of that data. But the anomalous data is rare. And so it doesn't overturn the whole framework. Is Am I understanding that right? Yeah, that's exactly right. And so that means then uh, that there must be some way to, again, account for the preservation of, in this, in this case, DNA, just long enough now for it to become uh, entombed within, within a mineral encasement. And, and so, for example, this particular specimen that was studied was, a high, uh, was an exceptionally well-preserved specimen that had very well-preserved uh, cartilage material. 
And cartilage uh, uh, actually it lacks uh, vascularization, meaning it's not porous, but it's a very solid material that really prevents microorganisms and environmental enzymes from gaining access and even water uh, to any kind of materials that would be embedded within that cartilage matrix. On top of that, the, 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 the DNA was detected in what looked like to be the remnants of chondrocytes that were undergoing cell division. This rapid cell division that these chondrocytes were undergoing likely created an oxygen-depleted environment that, again, would have decayed, uh, delayed the decomposition process. Uh, and, and plus, uh, the, the DNA was likely coming from chromosomes that were tightly condensed, tightly packed, which would prevent access of materials that could degrade the DNA from actually gaining access to it. Uh, and, and then on top of that, what was discovered wasn't full DNA molecules that were completely intact, but what was rather small, tiny fragments of DNA, most likely, that was what was being detected. And so that makes a lot of sense, again, given everything we know about DNA decomposition. So in other words, it's possible to come up with reasonable uh, uh, scenarios for how the DNA could survive. Again, not it doesn't have to survive 75 million years. It has to survive just long enough to become, again, encapsulated in a, a mineral matrix. And at that point, it's going to essentially freeze it. It's going to be in suspended animation until researchers come along and release the DNA from that, that mineral matrix. Well, this is really fascinating, Fuzz. I, I'm wondering, as I'm talking to my non-Christian friends, why is this Im discussion important? What, what are the things that are going to be in their minds about it as a non-Christian? You know, the idea that, that the earth is only 6,000 years old to people that are non-believers uh, is really a ludicrous idea, to be frank. And, uh, and so when we try to uh, couple our defense of the Christian faith with a young earth paradigm, we really get into big trouble and we really undermine uh, the gospel itself. And it's very tempting to use this idea of soft tissue materials associated with fossils as evidence for a young earth, but I've never met anybody who was a non-believer who found th this argument to be compelling, even in the least. And so to me, I think the important point here is this, that we want to be very careful as we advance scientific arguments for the Christian faith. We want to make sure that those arguments have scientific credibility. Uh, otherwise, we really do our case a lot of damage. Very good. Well, thank you for the conversation. And I want to encourage all of our viewers to go check out Fuzz's blog, The Cells Design. It's at reasons.org.